these four things. So language additions, conditional formatting, then the proce uh, preview mode for the dashboards, and then process KPI reporting, these pre-made charts. So there's a bunch of a full gallery of, of, of charts, pre-made charts available. So four topics for our today's session. And uh, let me get started with the language editions. So pretty straightforward to understand. Everybody wants to use process mining with some language. And so far, Process Analyzer has been shipped with the English user interface. So English has been the only option in the web user interface. And now we are launching six additional languages. Immediately, they are all available at the moment. And the user can select uh, whatever language they prefer. And the setting is, of, of course, then there. Uh, saved into the user preferences. Uh, it can be also like a preset uh, in the customer environments and in the cloud environments. So we have a total of seven languages available for Process Analyzer. And let me jump into the demo. So here we go, Process Analyzer. Now uh, let's go to the uh, home starting page. So here, here we go and go to the process discovery and see the user interface like this. Now, what if I would like to see this user interface in some other language? So I click on this, uh, my, my navigation uh, button, and then I go to the user settings. And in the user settings, I have the language options. So I can choose whatever, let's say, want to use the French version, it will reload the, the, the settings. And there you go you have the French version available. And as we see the user interface texts, everything is here uh, uh, translated into, into French. So this is a nice feature you can use. It goes all of these settings over here, you find the, the French version. And of course, if you have a French model, so obviously you may have some um, some uh, process mining models. Let's say I take, uh, for example, this P2P model in French, then you can see the kind of the French uh, version with the French text. Of course, GPR Process Analyzer supports all uh, languages in the data content. So these activity names are coming from the data content. So that has always been possible. But now the user interface uh, is the one that you can uh, just click the button and it translates the user interface text. And when you want to go back, you go here, let's say you want to check the, the Finnish, Finnish language, which is, uh, looks uh, interesting. So you can see it here, Tapahtuma Tiitti, and this kind of, this kind of uh, vocabulary over here. And then let's, let's go to take the so the uh, language editions are here and everybody can select this uh, for, uh, for their own. Maybe at this point, maybe only we didn't give a good introduction of you, but uh, maybe you could say hello, and maybe you could also say a couple of words how these language settings are uh, going to be stored uh, into the system configuration if you want to publish a certain language. Yeah, yeah yes, so welcome to the webinar on my behalf as well. So yes, I'm excited of this new language uh, support feature. So, uh, but yeah, so well, out of the box you don't need to configure anything you can just choose the language and, and it works but um, when you're taking that functionality into you use um, you might want to set the the uh, default language so so the most commonly used language is recommended set that as a default language so then users get it um, get the right uh, language then uh, automatically 
So, but uh, you can find more information from the uh, wiki how to how, how to set up that. And we tweak also this this uh, functionality to get everything out of it. Yeah. So you go to the the wiki wiki environment and uh, and, and search for the language edition. So that's that's the way how you can set up your preferred languages so that everybody is happy with what they get. Hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Ole. Okay, this was the language editions. Then let's move forward. Conditional formatting. So conditional formatting is now available for all the chart components, so all the tables we see over here, and there's a lot of uh, possibilities that you can do. Uh, here you see two examples of conditional formatting, and uh, the, the, the settings are available for the background color, so as you see here in this automation array, there's a background color with the three um, color scale, but that's a background color setting. And then we have the text color. So you may choose to control the background color or the text color or both of them. Then an additional uh, formatting is the data bar. And this savings as an example of a data bar. So you can freely choose the color of the data bar and then how long uh, bar you want to have here representing the amount of whether how big or small the number is. So that's the data bar setting and then we have the setting for the icon and I will be demonstrating all of these and uh, here is a list of, uh, of, of, of uh, options that you have. Obviously no point in, in memorizing these options because they are all available here in the QPR Process Analyzer wiki. So tables, conditional formatting, and here you see the options and you see the templates and then how they are, how they can be used and configured. So let me go to the Process Analyzer standard version and uh, we see the flowchart over here with all the details and everything. And then we see the KC's analysis here. And you see that there's already one pre-configured conditional formatting over here. So this case duration has a conditional format. So let's see, let's see how it has been created. So I open the settings, uh, chart settings for this um, uh, ACs analysis. So remember that you can always take any of these presets and then start modifying it with your own um, uh, wishes if you want to do something. So we go to the columns and we search for the case duration. And here we see that this table conditional formatting that is now controlling the background color. So that is the reason why the background is showing grades of yellow. And the controlling code is here. But now it's easy for us to go to the wiki and then let's say that, okay, if I want to use the green data bar, uh, for example. So let's say that I have the green data bar settings here. I'm just gonna copy this, copy and go here and paste the text, apply and apply. And what do we see here is the green data bars. So now, the green data bar is showing the, the, the bigger data bar, the, the more days the duration uh, takes in this case. So the case duration is longer. So this is 218 days compared to the 79 days over here. And what did I do is that I just changed the table conditional formatting field of this case duration column. So now it's showing the data bar ranging from the zero to the maximum duration in the model. And it also has a dynamic color, color setting. So it could be a fixed color, but in this case, it's a dynamic color between the dark and, uh, and light green. And the fun doesn't stop here. You can choose whatever colors you want. And, uh, and you can take like the, the scales. So this is now controlling the background color. And, uh, and then in a similar way, you can control the text color. Let's say here's an example that is controlling the text color and it's based on a comparison 
whether the duration is longer or, or higher than something. So let's take this example and let's make our own rule and say that uh, if the duration is less than, let's say, 80, then the color should be different. So now looking at the results, we see that if it's less than 80 days, we have the red color and otherwise we have the green color. And this is now in the text color, but it could be in the background as well. So this is an example of how to create the text color changes, but also how to create the sort of uh, traffic light kind of functionality where you have a certain limits that you want to use for the conditional format. Okay, that was uh, that was it. And then here we have a red, white, green color scaling so for the background. So we can also experiment with that option. So let's go to the analyzer and take the duration. And let's take this one. And let's use something like a 100 over there and see the effect. So now we have the effect of seeing some uh, high values with the green and some low values with the red color. And then the intermediate colors here are kind of uh, closer to the white color. Okay, and then finally, uh, if you really want to start playing and making, making beautiful reports and analysis, you have uh, almost unlimited amount of icons available. So you can use an icon to represent, uh, to communicate this, uh, uh, to further communicate the, the actual values. So what I mean by that is that we take the case ratio, let's go to formatting, and let's use the icon sentiment satisfied and dissatisfied. And let's say that the 100 days is, is the break when you are either satisfied or not. And then let's see what kind of icon we are using here. And it has shows the happy face, smiling happy face with the green or the sort of the unhappy face with the red. And these icons come from the this uh, icon gallery, which is over here, uh, material icons. So you can use it Android, iOS, web, wherever. Okay, so all of these icons are available in Process Analyzer to, to find you your uh, presentations and, uh, and make, the, make the tables look, look nice. Is there only maybe something I forgot or would you like to add something like, uh, have you seen some nice icons being used or or some other? <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, this is also excellent functionality. So as we know, tables are very uh, good way to, uh, efficient way to show data, but on the other hand, they are not usually not very exciting, but this functionality really makes also the tables exciting representations and um, I'm especially happy because this functionality is something that is very familiar from, for example, Excel and from many BI tools. But uh, all right, now there is a process mining tool that also has this similar functionality as, as powerful as, as BI tools have. And that is process analyzer now. But uh, I expect to in the next release, see this similar functionality also in the KPI card. So that KPI card is visualizing a single uh, KPIs uh, there. So we'll have this conditional formatting also for, for there. So you, so you can have have colored backgrounds and colored colored uh, uh, KPI uh, uh, measure measure value text and also the icons icons there. Yeah. Yes, definitely. So, uh, so we we will be taking this into further use, and then then as you said, its tables are great for presenting a lot of information. But now, when you want to uh, make it easy for the humans to see the 
the good and bad behaving areas and, and the differences in the data you can use conditional formatting and we were playing with the case duration but of course like there's already a couple of other dimensions for example the how many events there are in the case we can take the events and it has the empty conditional formatting but you just click edit and then you think okay let's say that i want to see this dark blue data bar representing how many events any particular case has over there and then let's apply and there we see the dark blue data bar so this is how easy it is to uh, to add the conditional formatting to your own charts and your own dashboards yes very good let's move forward and if you have any questions please feel free to write to the uh, uh, to the chat box of this uh, go to webinar we will be addressing those after the sort of the official uh, part is over okay let's go forward to the preview mode for dashboards okay this is a very straightforward feature and uh, and we have added this functionality to help the ad hoc usage of ready-made dashboards so the point is process analyzer is very very flexible tool somebody can create a dashboard for a large organization and then there will may be 100 users using the dashboard so now we have added the preview mode to help using that dashboard for ad hoc analysis where you want to change some of the settings in the dashboard but you don't want to really save the dashboard for the other people so that's why we have the preview mode where you are using the dashboard and then when you want to do some changes that affect also the other people in your organization then you enter the edit mode and in the edit mode you can now make your changes and save those changes so that they will affect also the other other people and from the edit mode it's also possible to enter into the add component mode and in this mode you are able to select new components to your dashboard so there's like a three levels of uh, of uses for each dashboard okay let me demonstrate so we'll just simply take a dashboard like the operations overview wow nice dashboard and uh, i could be doing some filtering or or whatever i want to do here I, mean, I have the nice colors and everything but i could be doing some further analysis further filtering and uh, and uh, and that that is now possible uh, possible to do like I can just whatever whatever if I select only this this period or everything will change and I can uh, I, I'm just using the dashboard I'm I'm making change here to some of the settings but uh, but uh, the system is not asking me any questions I got the chart settings here I can say general okay maximum of okay, I want to see okay couple of these things over here now we are see only a couple of parts so I'm doing all kind of ad hoc changes here and now I can move on to another dashboard and the system is not asking anything from me and then when I go back to my operations overview I have the original one so I was using the dashboard in a preview mode so I was able to make all kind of changes and then when I go forward those changes are in a way lost and then when I come back it's again the same starting point. That's the preview mode, preview mode. Now, if I want to make real changes to this dashboard and save them for the others, I'll go to the desk, edit dashboard. So now I'm in the editing mode. And now I have the, uh, the save button over here. So if I now go and make some changes, I can do these changes already before, but uh, whenever I make the changes, now I have the save button over there. So I can actually save this and if I save this then of course those settings are saved for everybody 
And this was the normal, simple change I was making as a developer. And then there's a more complicated change. I can add a new chart. So I go to this add component mode where I can delete charts and add new charts. Just take a new flow chart or something from here. And, uh, let's say I want to get rid of, uh, rid of this control and then uh, let's take a flow chart instead and let's put it over there. So now I was in this uh, adding the component mode. And if I now say that, okay, I'm done with adding the component mode, I'm now in the editing mode. And I could now click the save to save this dashboard for everybody. So three modes. Well, now I don't want to save this. So you see, if I open the new dashboard, it says I have unsaved changes. And then I can say, save, just cancel this. Let's keep this dashboard open and running. Or I just say, don't save. I don't want to make any changes. So now I went to the map. And now again, the operations overview is back to where it was already. So three levels of uses, preview and edit and add component. And the normal users can only, can simply be in the preview mode. And, uh, and if they don't have any editing rights, then they even don't have these options over here. So for the normal viewer users that you have a lot of those in your organization, they can simply use the charts and uh, dashboards and enjoy the ready-made uh, uh, user experience that somebody has already created for them with the possibility to do ad hoc changes. So they can make ad hoc changes to all of the components. Okay, uh, that was the, hmm, since I have been asking only a couple of questions, why not ask also for this? So anything you want to add? Uh, there are some use, there's many use cases for this. So would you, would you like to say something? Well, a small comment from product development point of view. So, well, in process mining, there might be some advanced functionality that, that require training and familiar realization but we think when designing the UX UX uh, for process analyzer is that creating and especially viewing dashboards they are not not belong to that so it means that those functionality should be very intuitive for the users to use and now with this improvement I think the process analyzer is quite close to, to reaching reaching that point that anyone can can just create a new dashboard without the prior familiarization with the with the tool yes that's a very important comment because uh, people who do the process analysis the rpa people the process improvement people those they are specialists in analyzing data and then making the findings, improving the organizations, and they should not be kind of specialists in computer programming. So making a new dashboard uh, must be so, so simple that everybody can do it. And this is definitely the design goal of CPR Process Analyzer. And now with this user interface change, uh, we are hiding the more complex functionalities uh, to those who enter the edit, uh, editing modes and add component modes, but they are still available very simply. Just go to those modes and then you can do everything you want. Very nice. Okay, let's move forward. We have process KPI charts. Well, this is a super nice addition. We actually already launched this in 2025, but due to the summer break, we didn't have a release webinar. So now uh, I'm uh, touching this, uh, this functionality. We are touching this functionality over here. So we have a nice collection of 10 new preset charts available for uh, uh, service level agreement. Uh, analysis, meaning that whether your organization or your process is meeting the service level, agreed service level, which is typically expressed in a certain amount of time available for a certain process step, like uh, 
uh, like a three days time to solve a ticket in a customer care. Then we have the four I principle, which means that it should not be the same person to do two activities. So, for example, the person who approves the payment should not be the same person who actually makes the money transfer. So there should be at least two persons involved. If I make my travel expense report, then it has to be my superior to approve that travel expense. That would be, again, for ICE, two people making those. And then continuing when uh, my boss is approving uh, the payment, then the person who actually does the payment maybe also needs to be a separate person. So again, four eyes in, in that particular process. So there are these four eyes principle uh, charts now readily available. And then we have the on-time delivery, which is a very nice uh, 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 area where we check the occurrence of two particular activities, like the confirmed delivery date and then the actual delivery. And then we see whether the actual delivery was before or after the confirmed delivery date for that particular case. So every case, every customer order has typically their own confirmed delivery date. And then that particular case is being uh, analyzed against that particular. Case. So this is roughly the, the, the uh, area where we are. And uh, and uh, in this release webinar, I don't have we don't have time to go through all of these. But let me show you the something from the demo point of view. So we have this blog article, process PPR reporting charts, and uh, and all the all the functionality at the charts are explained over here, and uh, and they can be used from there. And let's let let's see how they actually. Uh, work in the normal situation. So I'm going to just simply go to the uh, process discovery, the default, default view, and then let's take our settings for the chart and see this use case process KPI report. So all these charts are here, and then I can just pick whatever I want. For example, the service level agreement compliance. So let's say I have a target of four days from, and now I would need to say from the purchase order item is being created to a, let's say the, uh, sorry, the, the, yes, okay, the confirmation, let's say that would be, a certain amount of time. So now we see that uh, that within the particular service level agreement, we got 26% of the cases are conforming. So we got the vendor confirmation in that time. And then in 19.5%, the SLA is broken. So they fail. And in this example, 54% of the cases don't have the vendor confirmation at all. So, for example, I could select this one and say that uh, let's exclude these cases so that I can analyze those cases that I had. And then, and, uh, <laughs> okay, well, didn't really go as I was thinking, but let's support about that. The uh, that was the SLA compliance chart but I can also see the SLA compliance as a trend. So here, the second chart is showing the compliance as a trend, saying that uh, what is the SLA percentage over the time with this data. And in the similar fashion, uh, uh, I, I encourage you to look at the on-time deliveries, which again, ask you to have the starting uh, sort of the starting activity and the ending activity and comparing uh, 
uh, is it like uh, on time? Is the delivery happening on time or is it a late delivery? And again, here we have the delivery trend and then we have the failure histogram showing that uh, uh, as, as, as the failures are growing on, so uh, which is the, uh, what kind of ratios are there uh, causing the day scout to go, go up? So we have the histogram version for this, and then we have the add the histogram version also for the service level agreement. So let's say that uh, if the actual duration between the events is getting higher, then how many percentage are then meeting the SLA? And in this example, with the 50, uh, 50 days, we start to meet the, the cumulative percentage of 97% are being done according to the SLA. So then you can use this histogram to select, to analyze where you potentially could set your objective. Like in this level, with the 95% of the cases, you will be doing in 33 days. Okay, and then the 4i principle, uh, principle trend and the violations. So you need to set up the attribute information as well. So this was uh, this was the process analyzer uh, 2020.6 tip.